Regarding Men, Episode 39. Women are insane, men are stupid. With Ava Brighton. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. I'm Paul Edelman with a voice for men and an ear for men. As always, I am joined by the inimitable <laughs> Diamingo, uh, formerly of the University of Ottawa, now editor-at-large for the world on men's issues, and we are happy to have her. Next, also, of course, is Mr. Tom Golden from menaregood.com. Men are good. Uh, talk about stating the obvious. Uh, Tom's, Tom does it, and it still pisses him off. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, men are good. And today, we're going to be talking, as you can see here, we have a guest with us. Her name is Ava Brighton. She has a new YouTube channel, and she is speaking out large and in charge about men's issues and a lot of stuff about women <laughs> that <laughs> is difficult to say. So I want to say welcome to you, Ava. Glad Thank to have you here. Welcome, Ava. Thank you mm -hmm. for having me. Thank you. <laughs> we're going to start this out. We're, we're going to be asking questions. And I think, obviously, the first thing I want to know is kind of, you know, when I look at somebody sort of coming out and I look at one of your new videos has nearly 50,000 views on it. Obviously, your message is resonating with, with people. Obviously, your message is a rare one for women in this culture. Um, I mean, we have the glorious Janice Fiamingo with us right now, and there's a handful of other women uh, uh, out there that are speaking to these issues, but it's still generally rare uh, for women. Yeah. So I want to know what led you to this? What made you decide that you needed to speak out? And it's sort of a two part question what made you willing to? knowing that you were going to be attacked as a gender traitor or whatever other terms they come up with now for women who speak about honestly about men's issues and honestly about frankly the nature of women so what got you here um well um it started with me um when i was growing up i never knew anything about this i i was not really into to learning about it because i just didn't know um, and um, I have a, a partner, um, when I met him, I, um, he told me about his past. Uh, he has a, an ex-wife, an ex um, which uh, she, well, she is, she's diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. And yes, and, um, she, she uh, already when I met him, she, she was already gone, obviously, for years. So 10 years, it was, it was 10 years ago when I met my partner. Hmm. And she had taken away his, his daughter, um, his, his money. Um, she, she went to, to court in, in Spain because they were living in Spain. Um, and she got a restraining order against him just out of nowhere. And he was ordered to pay her 4,000 euro per month for child support. And he, in the, the, when I met him, he already did not see his child for about 10 years. Just every now and then when she, when she had an uh, up in her mood then, then they, they, they would see each other. And um, I already knew about this and everything was destroyed, but he kept going on. Um, so that was really the reason that I um, 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 knew about this, that I started to know. But obviously I think that many people have this same thing is that they think that they're the only ones. Because you don't know that the world is going through this, 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 this exact same thing. I didn't know it either. Um, so I, um, seven years later, I was so fed up. Uh, up until this very day, we're under attack from this, this woman oh. and um, many others. Uh, because they, she gets help from other women to, to, to try and report him, to do things like this. And um, I've seen it happening. I've, I, I know that, that his side is the correct one. I've seen the proof. I've seen the loss hand in hand with the woman um, trying to just destroy the man, that, uh, my, my partner in this case. So that was the reason that I learned about this. And it was, I think it was 2017 when I, uh, I suddenly saw an, um, the red pill uh, advertising on the internet. And I, I just thought it was a movie. I didn't know anything. So I started watching that, that documentary, Professor J. And then it, for me, it was eye-opening to see that this exact same thing that happens to my partner happens to, to 
do, well, globally. Yeah. And um, that's, why, that's when I thought I have to, to tell people about this. That's what I first thought. But I never did it because it's not my language. And I thought, what, what can I do? What, what can one woman do? But the last two years, they try to personally attack me. So I'm under attack already for the past years. Um, that's why I, I thought I'm, I'm going to speak out and I'm going to, to, to get every detail that I can find um, to make it into one video where I explain about this, this, the things that are going on in the world with, with women attacking men, laws that are, are, are just supporting the women that do this, these things and um, just make a video of it and share a little bit of my personal story um, because I'm already under attack. So I'm, for that, I'm not afraid anymore because every day these things happen to me too. So that's, that was mainly the reason and the reason that I'm not afraid to speak out now. You know, I noticed in, in your video ab about women, you really don't pull any punches uh, no. uh, about this no, stuff. No. I mean, you talk about the invent infantilized attitudes, the sort of childlike behavior, yeah, and yeah. something. And I think you said that uh, basically women are sick and men are stupid. Yeah, um, yeah partly. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you, that's preaching to my choir. I've been saying this for years, that, that there is a shared responsibility in this, though. Yes. That, yeah, that yeah. Women don't get where they get in a vacuum. Yeah, yes, that's true. That's what I think, yeah. Because when I, when I see what I was seeing about those women, um, I see it, it uh, happening, uh, or no, not, not, not the specific part that a woman is trying to destroy a man, but just the general, um, um, the things that happens, make me think and look around me and, and, and conclude that women, the vast majority, I think, uh, nowadays, are, are, I don't know, it's, I, 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 I explain it as being insane, obviously, because it's just the, 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 the intelligence is, is nowhere to be found. Uh, um, and especially when you look on the internet, on social media, um, I, I cannot just open my, my Facebook account or anything without getting annoyed. I just cannot read anything anymore. I just, I, it's, it's, it's terrible. Not even the women that are, are vicious, but there's just this, the toddler style that they're, uh, that they're using in their language. And um, the, if I, if I, when I uh, a while ago, um, a, a couple of years ago, um, someone gave me a specific cooking book. I don't know why, but they gave it to me on my birthday, thinking that I would like to cook or anything. And this, this, I, don't, <laughs> I cannot read. I, you just couldn't read it. It was written by a woman for an ad adult woman, and it was just like the stories. It just so so. The intelligence is so low. I don't. Uh, I'm just annoyed on a daily basis. So that that's that's what I was thinking. And it's not not just that I think that the men are stupid. That's what I think, only because the, the women nowadays are getting the, um, uh, the, the possibility to, to, to um, be lawyers and everything. That happens somewhere, I think. It is just, I think that the men, um, I'm sorry if I explained it in a, in a difficult way, but I think that the men are, have allowed this to yes, happen. Yes, exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's not, it's not just stupid, but... Um, yeah, I just don't know how to explain it. That's really. stupid. But, yeah. It is stupid. It is stupid. It's, it's all right. Stupid. That's exactly right. You said some of the most beautiful things in this video. And one of the ones that caught my eye was the louder she is, the more she screams, and the weaker she is, but the more she gets. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> and I went, wow, that's, yeah, that hit it right on the head. You know, <laughs> the louder she yeah. is, the more she screams, and the more she gets. The yeah. weaker she yeah. is, but the more she gets. And that's yeah. kind maybe, of so maybe I could pull Janice into this with this too. Uh, I'm just curious because uh, I often think if I were put myself in a woman's place, and I look at the what I could would consider to be the insultingly low expectations that we have on women's behavior, the low standards 
uh, when you know Ava talked about dealing with this borderline X. They don't go away. No, they, they never don't. go away. They, they don't know how to go away. It'll be 10 years later, and yeah. she will still find a way to snake back into this guy's life and create problems. Yeah. And yet, we tend to sit around and say, you go, girl. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Do you guys, I'm wondering from Janice and Ava, do you ever feel like this is kind of insulting toward your intelligence as a human being that, that you're expected to engage in this and to, to lionize this terrible behavior? Mm -hmm. I don't find it personally insulting because I've never encountered men who were insulting. I, I find it more scary that men are so gullible as to fall for what are pretty clearly manipulative, you know, overtly controlling actions by women and that they somehow the majority of men or at least men in positions of power don't feel able to say no to these women. And that was the thing that really struck me, Ava, about I watched also your, um, I think it was your second video, which I found even more compelling than the first one, which was called Are Almost All Women Mentally Insane, which is a wonderful comprehensive sort of laying out of your your, your, your response to the phenomenon yeah. that we've witnessed especially over the last two years with me too but then you sort of backed up a bit and you had your video how to destroy a man in which you mentioned the the book that we ourselves just found yeah. recently the the damn handbook and you mentioned reading that and how that crystallized a, a lot of your concerns and and you talked about personal experiences you'd had with witnessing how the law actually supports yeah these crazy, manipulative, destructive, hateful, vengeful, you know, irrational women. And I found that really powerful. And, and it makes your point. Men, it's men, men, or not just men, but certainly men passing these laws to enable women to destroy yeah. men without the need for proof, without the need for due process, without the need for the presumption of innocence. Uh, yeah. If men hadn't been more than willing, even eager to enable this bad behavior, it couldn't possibly have happened. And even now, if men were willing to stand together and say no, it couldn't keep going. And yet it does. And, and yeah. so I, I find that not, not personally insulting, but just, I don't know, dismaying, I guess, and, and, yeah. and actually terrifying because my sense, Ava, from, from listening to your videos, I just watched the two that I named, um, is that you feel pretty concerned about the future that, that you see yeah. societal collapse or uh, you know, so at least a breakdown yeah. of, of law and order and a, a functionality yeah. if this is allowed to continue. And I feel exactly the same way. And so, and I don't know what, you know, I never know what to do. Like, do you think, should we be appealing primarily to men to, to, to say no, or is that a hopeless case or do you think that women are the ones who have to stand up against their their crazy sisters because it is a frightening prospect if this continues yeah. well i've been thinking about this but um there's no real answer to it yet but um what i think it, it should be a collective it should be a man and and women but as we to 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 stop this from happening to any to going any more any further um but the thing the problem is is what I think, um, the laws are now already this far, and it happened really fast because um, what I think is women were, um, um, were not able to, to vote or to uh, do anything years ago. And because of that, I think that men thought, um, okay, now let's, let's um, give the women a chance or something and then that was the reason that they they started to climb up do good in school go be judges go uh, they they just they just work themselves up in all kinds of good uh, high positions mm -hmm. and if they um uh, and within that position i think the um i think it was 2017 when the me too thing happened that was really something that when when that happened after after those years, you see an explosive change in laws for yes. women against men. Yes, and that's why I think that if men are are 
if men want to do something about this, they, they'll be in jail. I don't think that men are able to do anything about this at this point in time. Mm. Um, if, you are, 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 if you can be, be punished by sitting with your, with your legs spread in the, in, in the train, what, what do you expect that men can do if they speak? They, mm -hmm. they, cannot, they cannot do this. So I think that um, women should speak out, obviously, because there are a lot of women that, that, that are uh, against the, the radical feminism of today. Um, but I think that we really have to do something about it because when I look at the men going their own way, for example, I completely sympathize with it because I understand them. I understand completely where they're, going, where they're coming from yes. and I understand why they are doing it and they protect themselves from any harm which is the best thing to do today. But the other thing what I'm really concerned about is that if they just turn a blind eye to all the women, don't think that women in high positions will stop making new laws. They are going to continue. So if, if they just, if all men go turn a blind eye to these women, the women in power will make up new laws. For example, what I, what I think will be happening, I'm not sure, but for example, in two years, men going their own way, there will be a law against men going their own way. <laughs> just because it's possible. Everything is possible. And it's just so insane that I think that we have to do something now, because if we continue like this, because it's going really fast in the past years, if we don't do something now as a collective, then, then there won't be any law, um, then there won't be anything that a man can do in the future. They, they won't be able to leave their house, just completely insane as the women are. Um, I, I think this is really something that we have to do together, together. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, well. And there's so many forces that are fighting against that, you know, gynocentrism. Yeah. There's a big piece that's keeping the men from saying no to women. You know, and the in-group bias of women keeps women from saying no to other women. Yeah. You know, so you've got these two forces that are just colliding, and yeah. it's making sure things stay the same. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. So it's mm -hmm. people like you who are speaking up that are critical now. You know, if we had a million Avas, you know, yeah. or three million Avas, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, that yeah. would start to make a difference. So, that I mean, sure what would. you're yeah. doing is, is critical. So thank you for... 500. Uh, 500 mm -hmm. Avas could you make pick a 500? cultural difference. Absolutely. It's yeah. always smaller mm -hmm. groups of very true. vocal people that, that foster social change. Yes. That's the way it always starts. And it lets you know just how tiny this community is mm -hmm. of people that are actually looking at this stuff honestly. Yes. You know, one of the things, and this is for everybody in this discussion, I just had a, a, a family house guest, a young man, millennial generation. And we had a lot of discussion about these issues over this weekend. Uh -oh. And what I noticed in him, and I think it's probably pretty common, is that concepts that the older generation tends to value, like due process and those things, are really afterthoughts for a lot of younger people. We talked about the Weinstein case and Harvey Weinstein's accusers, and I was making the position that, hey, you know, he's not been convicted of anything yet. Uh, there's, there's been no conviction in a court of law, so maybe we should reserve judgment on a lot of this stuff until we have some sort of legal outcome. And it was like I was talking Greek to him. It, it, it wasn't that he recognized due process and, try, and, and really desperately wanted a way around it. It was though due process was something he had never considered. And when he did consider it, it lasted about three seconds. And no, a bunch of women complained he must be guilty. Right. Um, right. So I'm with Ava on this, man. I think that the, unfortunately... Men are stupid and women are crazy, right? Yes, now. I think that That's sums it up. That's the culture we have right now. And men speaking up. I've been speaking out into the void for a long time. So have you, Tom. Mm -hmm. um, and Janice has too. Not but, as long as you guys, but for a while. <laughs> but it's been there. And, you know, nothing world shaking has happened. And we seem to be getting more of this. 
Um, and, but I do think that it's a positive sign that we're seeing people like Ava come out and start speaking. Mm -hmm. um, this, is a, this is a dialogue that really needs to happen, but good Lord, we're so far from being able to make sense of this. How, how do you explain to a millennial that he's living on his knees when he doesn't see it that way. He sees mm -hmm. himself as being on a white stallion, being a savior and a great guy and what a human being should be because he chants things like believe the woman, mm -hmm. uh, no matter what she says. <laughs> and that for him is, is fulfilling a moral obligation. And so how do we combat that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's That's... pretty forbidden. It's pretty forbidding, that's for sure. Yeah, I, I'm also interested. Oh, sorry, Tom. Did go you ahead, wanna, Jess. Go ahead. I was just going to ask Eva. You know, the the question that does arise that I'm sure lots of people listening to this discussion will want to know about is why aren't you crazy? Can, do you see? I mean, you did talk about your ex, but uh, you know, a lot of women have that experience, and yeah. they don't become you. So, do you think you? And you said that before. Um, not your ex, sorry, your, your yeah, partner's yeah. ex. <laughs> uh, do you think that, was there anything in your upbringing? You said that before you met your partner, you know, you didn't really think about these things, but do you, now looking back, was there something, a strong father figure or, um, you know, positive relationships with men generally, you know, with male mentors or, I don't know, do you think there was anything that, that uh, enabled you to see clearly and to resist all the feminist messaging that, a lot of women obviously find very seductive. You obviously don't see yourself as a victim of patriarchy. You see yourself as a victim of radical feminism. Um, yeah. So do you think, is it, can you explain why you're the way you are? Um, no, well, um, no, my upbringing was, was, was just normal. My parents are not divorced. Um, I've not seen any, any insane women in my, uh, in my upbringing uh there was just uh it was just really 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 good when i was growing up but um looking back i can say um there is a reason that i just have two friends that are uh, uh women i just have two because i i and looking back i now understand why because i couldn't get along with with uh with with a multitude of the women because they're either gossiping or in, in when you're a teenager or something they're just uh, they're they're the ones that uh, I have the the most problems with with women, and um, I I was um, I, I I like to be uh, around men more because they are fun and they're they're not there's no problem if you say something they don't they're not offended quickly. This this is just I, I think the reason that I immediately um, um, I, I immediately believe that women are insane in this case because I've seen. A lot of things happening, and even before, or or even in the in the beginning, when I was my current partner um, uh, with the uh, ex, with the borderline ex, um, I've seen uh, women happening um, or doing things to me as well. Just not them, not those exes, but just women in general. I have the, the most problems. Have, uh, uh, the only problems that I have is with them. So I think that is the reason. Um, in school, everything was was good when it was with men. Teachers were good. The the female teachers, I, I um, well, I don't have good experiences with them either. So hmm. I just don't know why that is. I never knew why that was. But um, looking back, I I I start to to understand a little bit more. But I think that is the reason um, uh, why I I tend to believe men. I'm I'm, I'm sorry, I understand that I'm really a little bit radical in my uh, opinion because at a certain point I was thinking all women are just mentally insane. They're just insane. And um, I, when I was looking on the internet and I saw women um, uh, helping men, I would even say, what, what's your agenda? What, what, do you, <laughs> what do you think? And it's just stupid because I'm a woman myself. And um, I, 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 underst I understand that everyone is, is, is um, when they were watching my videos as well, um, many men were, and I learned a new word, thought, thinking that I, I am a chameleon. I don't know if you know the word, but I, I didn't know. It was new that they think that I'm, I'm not genuine or, or anything, which I completely understand. Um, 
I was yeah, going but, to ask about that very thing because this yeah. is something that, you know, women, I, we still get on these discussions on my channel, I still get almost every discussion. There's some guy that comes in the comments, comments and says, get rid of the woman. Yeah. Uh, it happens almost every time. And so I often wonder, and I, uh, again, I, I'm not being gynocentric when I say I admire the women that do this because sometimes you get it both sides. Uh, you get, if the, there's a contingent in our audience that doesn't trust you. Yeah, of course. I, I, I see that. I yes. Never yeah. will. And I wonder yeah. how you process that. How do you handle that? I mean, I've seen Janice handle it. She does it with great grace and a plum. Uh, but how do, how do you handle that sort of negativity like somebody that you're supporting is shooting back at you as though you're the problem? Um, no, I, really, really, I understand uh, where they're coming from. Because as I said, when I see a woman speak uh, on behalf of men, I think the same. <laughs> I, it really, it is just a thing that I, under, I understand completely. And I, 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 I think that they have been through a lot um, uh, personally then uh, to, 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 to get to the point where they think like this. And I understand that completely. And um, it's just, it's just um, I'm, I'm not, I'm not uh, thinking that it is all men or all women, not all, right. but right. The, the vast majority of women is, to, is doing this because they're educated, educated, being educated like this in schools and everything. They, they are really thinking that Feminism is something good and we need to have equality because we don't have it. Men are evil, men are rapists. It's just something that they teach. So I, I, I think there are a lot of women also that, that don't believe this. Um, I, I think there are a lot of women that have good experiences with men and that are not insane. I, I believe that they are, but the vast majority now today, when you see, say millennials, I think, well, those, they are growing up to be, the, the the biggest feminist of all i think um but when i look at the the people uh, on my comments um most of the time it is uh, men going their own way uh, i don't know how to say it, but those those men are are they the ones that that um that that say the bad the bad things uh, about my videos hmm. and the only thing that i can say is i, I understand and i have no problem with that whatsoever uh, because um, I understand, and it's not if if they don't want they if they don't want any help. I understand they don't need it. Then then that's good. But there are a lot of men who do want to have the help, and who who are really happy to see a woman speak out. So I, I think I'll, I'll just make my videos for the, the, the men that do want it, and for the women that agree with it, yeah. or to make it change their to change their minds. Let me punctuate that statement again. There are countless men out there who very much need to hear women say that they're not crazy for seeing what they see and yeah. for feeling what they feel and for thinking what they think. They really do need women out there saying that's right. Because what yeah. they're hearing from almost all the women in their lives, if they even speak up, which many times they won't, but if they do, they'll get rejection from their own families. Yeah, yes, and, yes. And so <laughs> I think it's critically important that, yeah. that we speak to these issues. Yeah, me too, yeah. Yeah, mm. I think so too. Um, uh, and I don't know, uh, I'm, I'm, I, I never expected to, to make videos because I was thinking this doesn't help anything. So why would I? I think there are a lot of women thinking the same thing and they just don't do something about it because they think it's not, it, it won't help. Um, but if we can, if, if, there, if perhaps my videos make women speak out too, or uh, I don't know, that would really make a change, I think. It's just, it's, one YouTube video doesn't change anything. It just helps men who are going through this um, to, to feel a little bit more supported. That's the only thing that, that the video does, I think. But if we have more, more uh, women who are looking at this and thinking, okay, I'm, I, I see this too, I'm going to speak out, then we have a chance in changing this because we really think, um, as I said before, I really think that we should do something now, uh, really actively do something.
Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. And I, and I do think, you know, a single video can actually have a huge impact. It really can. Because, I, I mean, we are, uh, as a species, we're, you know, herd animals in the sense that social conformity is incredibly powerful for so many people. So many people, if, if they don't hear an opposing view, they can hardly think themselves out of the social box, you know, that they're being put in. They've, I mean, I find it very difficult too. And to hear one yeah. person saying, it's all nonsense, it's all lies. That the exhilarating, you know, uh, truth of that, that yes. you, here's somebody else who thinks exactly as I think. I'm not crazy. It's my culture that's crazy. It's lying to me every bloody day. Yes. That's incredibly important for both men and women. And I think it can prevent men from, you know, completely checking out from giving up altogether. It can give them the strength of, of conviction to know that they're not crazy at all. And it can make a difference for women who, who can see that, that this is actually yeah. something evil. This is destructive. This is yes. terrible. This is destroying men's lives. And this will end very badly for everybody and for you to say it. And I love your passion in the videos. It really comes through your conviction, the specific examples of the crazy laws like in Spain in, your, in, the, in the video about how to destroy a man and, and, and the um, how horrific power that child services has over parents' lives. Mm. I, you know, those are... It's, it's crazy. Really helpful, and yeah, I, I, yeah, you should definitely keep going, and and don't feel that it's hopeless so, because it's indeed. really important. Yeah, you know, one of the things you said, Ava, in the first video was that you likened women to adolescents. Mm -hmm. and yes. I thought that you know that really does describe what we see. You know, the the flailing, the the demanding, the desire, but unfortunately now the adolescents have the key to the asylum. You know, it's like, wait a minute, what the heck's going on here? It's just absolutely insane. Yeah. And if I could go back to, to the importance of, the, of that too for a moment, you know, I walked around from about, I think it was 85, that I started noticing something was wrong. Yeah. Right. Just something generally was wrong. Right. And I had no idea what it was. Right. Absolutely none. I couldn't put my finger on anything, but I just knew. Things, some things I saw made me uncomfortable. I didn't even know why. And then eight years later, in 1993, Warren Farrell released The Myth of Male Power. And I read like 10 pages into it. I was like, yes, this is exactly. what's bothering me. Exactly. And I didn't know it. I didn't have a language right. put around it. I didn't even have the structures in my brain to think about these things in the right perspective and to be able to see what he was talking about. Mm -hmm. So I just said all that, say this, don't ever, I mean, at that moment of enlightenment, when I finally, the light went on my head, that was the moment the Red Pill movie started. It took a long time to come to fruition, but it was that moment where it started. And uh, don't ever estimate, underestimate the power of one person speaking Yes. It's, it's an incredibly, you can do a lot and you will do, I bet. You've already done a lot. Do a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, yeah. That's good to hear because I'm, I'm really, um, still I'm very skeptical because um, what, what, what do you say, Janice? That, that's a good thing because you, you say um, when, when you make a video like this and, and um, women also are watching this and thinking, oh, so this are all lies and perhaps change their, their, their mindset. Um, but the reason that I'm, I'm a little bit skeptical about just a video on YouTube is that you change the opinion of an individual and or multiple individuals, okay, but there are still women in power who just make up laws, who, who teachers who are, um, are, are learning new children who don't see the video, for example, and mm -hmm. um, are they, they, that, that's the problem there. I've Massive indoctrination machine that's yeah, yeah. been put in place with 
the full complicity of peoples in all Western societies, as far as I can tell, that we now have yes. children being yeah. taught mostly by feminist ideologues in yeah. Canada. Anyway, there are hardly any men left in uh, certainly in the primary school system because if they are in there they're going to get accused by some um you know disturbed 12 year old girl of of some kind of sexual misconduct and and be disgraced and drummed out so so and they're not wanted in there anyway so yeah exactly you know that we can speak and we can reach some hundreds of thousands of people perhaps but meanwhile the next generation of yeah. foot soldiers for radical feminism are being trained up in all these different countries. It is, I mean, I do feel despair a lot of the time when I look at things. Yes. But, yes. You know, I mean, what I, my philosophy is sort of stoic pessimism. I'm very yeah. pessimistic about the future, but yeah. you know, it still feels good to speak the truth. Correct. It feels good to call out the lies. It is a good thing to do. It's morally good especially when you're speaking on behalf of others and people who, as you said, find it very difficult to speak. Because if you're a young man, well, you, you risk everything by, yeah. by merely by saying the same things that you can say with relative security. I mean, you, you are under attack too, but not in the same way because the primary weapon of women is the weapon of accusation of either sexual abuse of some sort or a threat of violence. And they can't really make those claims against other women is much more difficult. So yeah, I, I, I still feel, I feel good about saying the truth and I don't, I don't worry too much about whether I think it's having an immediate or even a long-term impact because yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I, I really, I, I, I see things getting worse and worse at d despite all yeah. the wonderful things that Karen Strawn has, has, you know, put out and you, Paul, and you, Tom, have put out, uh, you know, all, all the messages. Things seem to get worse every year. And I have hopeful friends who write me and they're always saying, the tide is turning. More and more, <laughs> you know, more and more people are seeing the truth. More and more people, you know, are, are resisting, are, are recognizing the lies. I don't know I, if, if that's true. Why is it that, you know, all of these laws continue to be enacted with majority approval why do we keep electing further and further you know radical left alt left feminist governments that want to control our lives and especially want to penalize men uh, it doesn't seem to me that that people are recognizing the the truth yet but but maybe they will so there's that's one all thing one can hope. that is important to remember in the midst of all this a couple of things actually i mean if i can pontificate <laughs> Please uh, do. being endlessly about this one <clears throat> is we don't quit trying to treat cancer because it's hard um we 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 don't just give up uh because most people aren't getting the message i know i worked 30 plus years in the addictions field where the recidivism rate is tragic i mean our our ability to treat chemical dependency is very poor i mean uh, it, you, it just doesn't work out that much of the time. But you don't quit trying. I was okay with that. I was okay with working with, with underdogs in that. And the first time I got an email that said, I, I thought I was crazy and I was suicidal until I found your work, every bit of it was worth it with the mm -hmm. one email. If I never got another one like that, right. everything yeah. I've, I've done would have been worth it. Um, exactly. This ultimately, and I think it's important to remember, we are talking about saving lives here. Yeah. The other good factor on this is that men can avoid so much of the damage from gynocentric culture with their choices. Yeah. They don't have to. I mean, MGTOW's got it right. Don't get married. Don't, I can't recommend legal marriage to, to anybody. And a guy deciding not to get married means he'll never end up in a divorce court. And he'll never, never end up with so many of the consequences there. So uh, I love this stuff. I love doing this. I don't think, I've said it before, we'll never have a men's rights parade. We'll never have a victory day. Culture is too gynocentric and hopelessly so. It, yeah. it, that will never change. But we can still reach out there and pluck one guy at a time out of the vortex just yes. with telling him the truth. Yes. And that it's always been worth it to me, always. But have you, when you, I have a question for all of you. When you look at the, um, the last few years, 
um, to me, it's, uh, it seems like um, the, the laws against men have, have, have um, how do you say this? Um, they, they explosively changed now. The, there are, are, are so many new laws against men. And I think, I'm not sure because I'm not, I'm not really, uh, I've, I've not really done my uh, research that well. But I think um, that it's just the past few years, I think since 2015 or 16, that there are, um, um, those, um, there are coming a lot of new laws against men um, that are really trivial or really bad. I don't, um, well, what do you think about this? And when you, for example, look at Sweden, the first feministic governed uh, country of, of the world, you see that there, it, it's already happening there. The government is, is feminist, all, wi all women, almost all women, and they are changing the laws. They are making it almost impossible for men to continue. So what do you think about that? The, because I have the feeling that, that we're going uh, in, a, in a wrong direction really quickly now. I think it's ever been thus, actually, and maybe we're seeing it accelerating in, in, in certain heavily gynocentric cultures. If you read a book um, called The Fraud of Feminism by E. Belfort Bax, have you ever heard of it? No. no. It's, it's a fascinating book, and um, it was published we'll in... Below to it. It was published in 1913. He was a British socialist and um, intellectual, wrote essays, and he was writing even in the late 19th century, um, you know, as early as the 1870s and 1880s about gynocentrism and feminism and, and, and all of the ways, so the things that we talk about now the ways that the laws were biased against men, the ways that women were able to get away with murder in child custody cases, in cases of infanticide, in cases of domestic violence, how all public perception and law was slanted towards women. So this has been happening for years. And then it, you know, it, and then it accelerated again, starting in the 1970s with the second wave of the women's movement. And now it's accelerating again with the fourth wave. And uh, so, so I, I do think that in some areas, things are, seem to be getting worse more quickly, but um, it, this, the, the, the struggle that we're involved in has been going on for decades and decades and decades. And I think that's part of the problem is that we don't realize that it's this very long ongoing cycle. Uh, I would so, say um, centuries. Yeah. So, so that it, in, in, in a way it's depressing to realize that, but it's also kind of encouraging in that, uh, you know, this isn't just the, this sudden thing where everything has gone wrong. Um, these problems have been in place and this struggle has been, you know, it's been there for, for, yeah, for centuries, certainly for the last century. Yeah, so know, that's helpful to know. I think yes. that I think that you are right that it has accelerated somewhat, but at the same time, one of the things that can tip you off about what's happening is look at the comments in articles. Yeah. And the comments in articles have changed in a huge way in the last 10 years. It used to be it was just Paul and I writing these comments, you know, or whoever, but now Hundreds and thousands of people are seeing the truth. They're seeing what's going on, and you can see it in the comments. So that's a heartening piece of, of all this, is that people are starting to wake up. You know, yeah. And yes, it has become more draconian in some ways, but people are starting to wake up, and that's a really good thing. And your work is helping to stimulate that even more, you know, mm -hmm. get people more awakened, not woke, awakened. <laughs> you know, well, <laughs> 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 yeah, and uh, also on top of that, I think that in some ways, the laws have started to improve. Um, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of tracks going on here. Uh, one of the things that's important to remember is that, you know, there was a time in the United States where if a woman committed, a, a married woman committed a crime, her husband had to go to jail for it. Really? That, that, was, that was actually... Right. Right. Uh, uh, the laws on the books uh, yes. at the time. That's what uh, Mark Angelucci just uh, had a victory uh, against the selective service system and got it declared uh, uh, as unlawful, which now the, the courts are going to have to contend with on some level or another. 
And overall, I agree with, with you, Ava, the, the trend has been much worse uh, with the, the fourth, fourth wave of feminism. But one thing that I always hang on to, and I don't want to ever give up on, I don't want a men's movement like feminism. Look, guys, if, if, if you're worried about the laws, then start voting against them, start speaking out, st uh, avoid situations where the laws apply to you. Take fucking responsibility for your life and quit waiting for somebody to come fight the boogeyman for you. Um, <laughs> if you want, you want a religious movement like feminism, you go for that, where the, you know, we, we deify women, we deify the idea that women were oppressed and we treated as sacrosanct. Um, if you want a movement like that, I think you're gonna fail. I think that's why we've seen steadily in studies year after year after year women's happiness is declining yep with feminism yep it, it, they're not happy i don't want a movement of guys that are miserable because they feel like victims really uh, and, and i don't buy the victim routine abe is right men have behaved so stupidly yeah that they're doing this to themselves yes and I think it's our job, not just to point out what the problems are, but to tell men they better wise up and start acting like they've got two brain cells to rub together and yes. to being such idiots about women. Um, and to cast off their gynocentric belt that's just got them locked in, yep. you know? I mean, that's what's happening is this gynocentrism is just locking men into thinking they're supposed to take care of women. And they got to yep. open that up and say, wait a minute, guys. You got to take care of everybody, you know, you and women and children and dogs and right, Barney? Yes. <laughs> Isn't this great for Ava? She got to come on regarding men and talk about all these warm, fuzzy, happy subjects with <laughs> <laughs> It's been good. It's been yeah. good. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Ava. I mean, we're really so, uh, yeah, like, very excited to, to meet very you. Very happy to have been yeah. introduced to yes. us. I'm very happy to see it posted to A Voice for Men. And uh, we have a link to Ava's channel below. Uh, go there and sub um, and support her work. Do you have a Patreon, Ava? Yeah, I created one uh, last week, I think. Yeah. Okay. Good. We'll put that down there, too. <laughs> We'll and get that in there too, if you want to support her work. Who gets the humanitarian? I think I'll nominate Ava Brighton. There is, I, I second it. Um, well, wait a minute. I, I got to ask something before I do that. Uh -oh. your, your intro to your videos has a woman with a knife behind her back. Now, yeah. it, that's not supposed to be a subliminal message about you. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Oh, okay, because we'll have somebody in the comments saying that's the case. No. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. No, the real reason for that thing that I designed there was that uh, you see a woman in, uh, in the, um, uh, like, a, um, how do you say, a maid, right? With a, with a dress, with a, she used to have um, a duster in her hand. Right. And I, I changed it, it with a knife behind the back because yes. you see the women how it was, well, yes. well, well, the woman how she was, uh, but it's, now she has a man. It's not it's me. <laughs> very appropriate. Very you know, oh, this yeah. whole. Mm -hmm. I just whole wanted to clear that up. Huge yeah. amount of literature about the difference between dagger people and sword people. You know, the swordsman comes out and says, "You and I are going to fight now." Mm -hmm. The dagger person stabs you in the freaking back. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's yeah. appropriate she would have a dagger. Yeah. Yeah. So at any rate, we on are that sad note. every week on this, we <laughs> hand out a humanitarian award to somebody that's doing some good. You qualify for that. So we're mm -hmm. recognizing you, Ava Brighton. For yes. yes. Bravo yes. to you. Thank you. Indeed. <laughs> Thank you we love you and we love the work you're, you're doing. Applying puta you to everybody's ex-wife. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the, cra the crazy ex supported by the state. Now, yeah. what kind of graphic can I use for that, Paul? Flying Puta works just fine. Mm -hmm. I know, but what's, how am I going to make everybody's X? <laughs> well, just, I don't know, put a generic face on there. Yeah, I, a I generic guess. face. Yes, a very generic face. put X across the front. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, All right. Yes. And have it twisting around like the, uh, what was that movie, the uh, one where her head twisted around? Trust me, the I exercise. got exorcist, yes. Mm -hmm. I got divorced 20 years ago, but I'll still recognize her. <laughs> oh God. Are we finished? We are finished. 
That's good. Ava, thank you very much. It's been good thank to have you. you. Eva. I hope we'll see you again. Yes, yeah. I hope Look so. forward to your, to your future videos. Yeah, really. Me too. Y'all take care. Thank you. <laughs> we'll see you. Bye-bye.